Now let's take a look at parts of the stream. When most people think of the stream, they're usually thinking of the stream channel. The channel is the deep part of the stream where water collects to flow downstream. Stream channels always run downhill. In a straight stretch of stream, the main force of the current is in the middle. The deepest water is also usually in the middle. The part near the shore is usually the shallowest. When there's a sharp curve in the river, the strongest current and deepest water moves to the outside edge of the curve. In flowing water, there is less current near the bottom. Areas where the stream flow slows and water depth increases are called pools. Shallower, faster flowing stream areas are called riffles. These areas can usually be identified by looking for small waves seen on the surface. The fast moving water between riffle areas and pools is called a run. Rapids may form where the water flows downhill very fast and pushes up against underwater obstacles. Rapids are where you see very turbulent water flow. There's very often rocks at that point, sometimes very large rocks or logs. In naturally flowing streams, it's common to see riffle, run pool, run riffle sequences. This is alternating slow and fast moving water. It makes great homes for aquatic life. This creates diversity. It recreates uh, an effect we call an edge effect. And that's the edge between a riffle and a run and a pool and a riffle. The channel is only one part of the stream though. The stream banks are the shoulder-like sides of the stream channel. Stable stream banks have plants growing on them. The roots of these plants hold soil in place and minimize stream bank erosion. When a stream bank erodes, it can cover the stream's bottom with sediment, with sediment or fine, fine particles of soil. Sedimentation can smother aquatic organisms and destroy their habitat. The riparian zone is the transition area between the stream edge and the uplands, and this typically has trees and smaller plants and bushes that extend outward on either side of the stream. The riparian zone with heavy plant growth may be the best protection or buffer against non-point source water pollution. For example, lawn fertilizers can cause problems when they get washed by rain into a stream, but a healthy riparian zone can help absorb the fertilizer before they get into the water. The same goes with sediment. This would be small particles of soil that can very often get washed into a stream, but a healthy riparian zone filters those out and helps prevent sedimentation from moving into a stream and causing pollution problems. Plants growing in the riparian zone help keep the stream healthy in many other ways. Trees shade and cool the water, which increases the amount of dissolved oxygen that the water can hold. Shaded stream segments may be as much as 10 degrees cooler than segments exposed to direct sunlight. Roots help hold the stream banks together, reducing stream bank erosion, leaving, leaving leaves and land insects that fall into the water available for aquatic life there. These leaves and an insects that fall fall from the vegetation on the banks, and this provides additional organic matter for aquatic food webs. The relatively flat land that extends outward on both sides of the stream or river is called the floodplain. During a flood, the large amounts of additional water that flow into the stream area, into the lowlands around the stream, spread out to cover the floodplain. Flooding is a natural characteristic of all streams. During a flood, large amounts of additional water overflow the stream banks and spread out to cover the floodplain 
as can be seen here in this photograph. By allowing this excess water to spread out, floodplains reduce the floodwater speed. As a result, less damage occurs in the stream and to areas downstream. But some people may ignore the fact that there's a flood. They ignore the natural function of floodplains and sometimes build roads and houses in floodplains. This often results in loss of property and sometimes even loss of lives during flood events. These areas, these floodplains, also contain rich soils best suited to farming. This is because during a flood, a great deal of sediment is stirred up and washed, washed downstream, and this often falls out and settles on the floodplains.